up guys? Welcome back to the Moniverse. Today, we are checking out the first teaser trailer for Disney and Pixar's Inside Out 2. Whoa, I have so many emotions right now. I mean, that's pretty appropriate actually <laughs> for yeah. this movie, but I'm excited for this. The first one's a fantastic movie. Pixar was knocking it out of the park. Do you want to just get into it? Yeah, let's just jump right in. Let's check it out. All right, guys, starting the trailer now. Yeah. Enjoy. kind of just reminding us of everything good about yeah. the, fir the first movie it's like, so far. Hey, so did you guys bad. remember that movie? And things couldn't be better. <gasps> Aww. Oh, pimples. She's getting older. We've all been there. Hey, she's a typical teenager now. That's true. What I want to push that bad? so much. I want to push that right button. Oh, they teased that. That was teased at the end of the movie. Oh, God. That seems dangerous. She almost okay, got squashed. Let's clear it all out. It's dead Man, they just day. work at all hours. <laughs> so, I think John Ratzenberger is that guy. Makes sense. He's got the same mustache. That doesn't seem necessary. Why, why are they chainsawing a couch in here? I think they're just dramatic. Who made the console orange? Do I look orange? I didn't touch it. Orange is not my color. Not me. Hello. Ah! Oh. <laughs> I'm anxiety. Where can I put my stuff? A new emotion. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. I'm sorry. We wanted to make such a good first impression. Uh, what do you mean we? <laughs> oh. <laughs> the feel everything movie of next okay. year. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was uh, that was a tease. That was a little tease. That was definitely a tease. Um, I have so many questions, though. I have equally as many questions. I mean, not really. It's it's like, <laughs> I see what they're trying to do. You're a teenager, so here comes anxiety and depression. Yeah. And <laughs> well, here's the biggest question this poses to me, because as everyone, I'm hope, hopefully everyone has seen the first movie, which is fantastic, but they kept it kind of simple because they had just the five emotions they yes. showed in Riley's head. But they also showed those same five emotions and the heads of multiple adults. And like they have a cute, that cute montage where they show like the inside of adults' heads, of dogs and cats' heads. So the, this brings up the question of like, so wait, these new emotions are coming. So why don't adults have them? Do they eventually go away? Or did they just conveniently never show up? That's the part that's weird to me is like, it feels slightly like retconning. I th it's, it is a slight retcon. And what they could do is, well, we only showed you adults who are confident and don't have anxiety. Well, let me tell you something, brother. Anxiety does not go away yeah. with adulthood. Yeah. I've never been more anxious sometimes. Yeah. Especially like with her mom who like her leading emotion was sadness. Yeah. So it's very weird to me the choices they were making with this because I do know in production for the original movie they had like dozens of emotion ideas before they I think rightly cut it down to five yeah it's cleaner that way because the first movie like on top of the emotions they had so much world building like and by world I mean within Riley's head but they had like so many of these very heady haha concepts they came up with in terms of like how dreams work in terms of how memories work yeah. so the fact that they're adding more now I just Again, makes sense for a teenager to feel anxious or embarrassed, but it's going to be kind of weird explaining all that because. Yeah, it's going to muddy the waters of the art. See, what you, when you run the risk of taking a world that you already fabric like created in such a detailed and very specific way that functions a very specific way, when you start introducing new elements, it feels like it might undercut a lot of what you set up in the last movie. Absolutely, because, and I love the first movie. If the only thing like I really critique about it is I think sometimes it gets a bit too invested in its own lore because there's all these concepts that they kind of have to like stop explaining, stop explaining. They're cool, but ironically takes a bit of the <laughs> emotion out of the movie because <laughs> they have so much they have to explain to the audience. So adding more of that, I think is a huge concern with this. And then we have to address the elephant in the room. It yeah. is the recasting of Bill Hader and Mindy Kaling. It's very problematic. And it's and it has me very concerned mm -hmm. for the movie. I mean, it almost made me not want to watch it. It's very upsetting. And this was reported like over a year ago because of pay disputes, which is crazy because literally the other three are all coming back as far as I know. And that's one of the strengths of the first movie. 
are all the vocal performances. Everyone was pitch perfect. By all accounts, I think, um, I believe you told me Tony Hill and Liza Lapira are their replacements. Yes, in the press release, that's what it said. So they sounded good in this. I probably wouldn't have questioned it if I didn't know, but it's it's such a bad look. It's such a bad look because, one, you, you hire such extremely talented actors slash writers like Bill and Mindy, mm -hmm. and then you don't pay them for their work and contribution to crafting these characters. Yeah. And, yeah, you could say... Well, their contributions are little because they're voice acting. And that in itself is kind of a backhanded statement, too. So no matter which way you slice it, it does. it's not a good look for Disney and for Pixar. That's for sure. Not at all. And again, I'm sure Tony and Liza will be fantastic. Tony, very familiar to Pixar audiences as Forky. Yeah. And, or well, for people who have watched <laughs> Veep. Um, Fair enough. Yeah. But yeah, so... Again, I'm sure they'll do well, but that's a bad look. Um, I'm not super familiar with the director, Kelsey Mann. I do think this is his directorial debut, but I think he worked on storyboards for some other films. The The biggest saving grace is the one of the writers, Meg LaFave, who which I probably screwed that up, from the first film is returning. So hopefully the script is still pretty tight. But overall, I, I'm curious. I think this was a cute teaser with... Yeah. Um, <laughs> the abrupt construction and the puberty button, like yeah. actually coming back in full force. Um, the biggest thing I do hope they do a little bit more is have a little more emphasis on Riley, because ironically, I think for a movie that's technically about her, that was also a teeny bit lacking in the first one. So kind of seeing as she goes through these things, I think there's a lot of good setup for humorous and, and awkward teen teenage situations with emotions. Yeah. But I kind of need to see it first to have faith in it. Yeah, and, and I know that the other four emotions were leaked early or were like teased by leakers early. And we kind of see that as they flash by in the trailer. Yeah. That almost confirms what they are. Mm -hmm. So Nikki, I don't know if you want to reveal what we think they are going to be. Yeah, so um, from what I recall... It's, it's, it's anxiety, anxiety, embarrassment, ennui, ennui which, which is very interesting, which is very annoying, and envy. And envy. Yes. So three very negative emotions. Four, uh, I would say four. Oh, four. Oh, sorry, four. I, was, I have the number four <laughs> and I said three. Uh, but why don't you tell... Uh, ennui is... Uh, for those of you who don't know, it's like listlessness. <laughs> yeah, like I have just... It, it's like, ap I would say almost apathy. Uh, I'm kind of surprised they didn't just say apathy. Yeah, it um, kind of reminds me of like Zordon. Oh no, we have to we have to get the, the worst people in the world. <laughs> no, teenagers. It, it paints such a hard, like a bad light on teenagers. But realistically, you know, these are emotions that we experience as we grow up. Oh, absolutely. And again, I think the general premise that your emotions get a little bit haywire as you go through puberty, I think that's a very sound concept and I get where they're coming from. But just based on what they've already established, I'm concerned but interested to see how that's integrated in a way. Yeah, we'll see how it all plays out. If you liked the video, give it a huge thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest content. If you want to check out our other reviews and reactions, click the link on the page. And until next time, guys, stay versed.